Hi, uh, so my name is Ron. If y'all can't tell by my accent, I'm gay. <laughs> A lot of people can't tell by looking because I always wear sleeves. <laughs> I actually told that joke once at a club and someone from the back of the house screamed, faggot! Oh. It, was, it was actually pretty sweet. I haven't seen my father in years. <laughs> <laughs> a little bit about myself, I just turned 45 recently. <laughs> I'm old, I'm still 45. But uh, yeah, since I'm an old white man, now I read a lot about World War II. <laughs> <laughs> For Christmas this year, my husband actually bought me the 4K HD extended edition of Schindler's List. <laughs> well, if there's one movie you don't need to see in HD, it is Schindler's List. <laughs> and I asked him, like, like, okay, premium film, but not a very romantic gift. I asked him why he got it for me, and he's like, well, I got it because it came with a digital copy. <laughs> mood by watching Schindler's List. <laughs> I've, uh, I've been getting married for about 10 years now. <laughs> I still call it gay married because it still pisses people off. <laughs> we will be gay married forever because gay divorce is a lot of work and we're both very, very lazy people. <laughs> but actually, I have a great marriage. Uh, I love my husband. Um, Okay, so is it okay? <laughs> <laughs> about my marriage is I wish we fought more. Uh, guys, um, I love a good gay fight. I, if you were ever, ever at a gay bar and two gay men stop, start fighting, film that shit. <laughs> Upload it, put some music behind it, it will give you so much joy, I swear to God. I don't mean to stereotype. But it always reminds me of the end of The Lion King when Simba and Scar are just like bitch slapping the shit out of them. <laughs> I love it so much. <laughs> yeah, we've been married so long that um, everyone is asking us if we're going to have kids, uh, which is not how biology works, by the way. <laughs> I think now is a good time to pause because I think more men need to say this. I'm 100% pro choice. It's none of my business. None of it is any of my business. Um, and like, I'm not talking about this six-week Texas bullshit. Yeah, no. Abortion should be a viable option until the child leaves for college. <laughs> Seriously. Have y'all ever seen a high school play? <laughs> what I love about abortion, and what's not to love, is uh, every time legislation is, is rammed through, the news always has some guy on talking about it. Like, like, who gives a shit? Is this man an expert on literally everything that every woman is going through at this time in history? Like, it's so weird, because we're living in weird times, because every idiot thinks he's a genius all of a sudden. You know what I mean? <laughs> like, I go to my Facebook page, and, and uh, I'm from a small town in Indiana, and people who barely graduated high school, never left the town, post like they're constitutional scholars or infectious <laughs> disease experts. I, I hate to break it to them, but y'all aren't, you're not an expert because you saw something online or you read something in a newspaper. I mean, Jesus Christ, I spent time in the closet. That doesn't make me Anne Frank. <laughs> She got knocked up. She sits right next to me. She made her wallpaper her ultrasound. That's weird, right? <laughs> yeah, it's like I just stare at the inside of this woman's uterus all day. So, so I don't mean to brag, but I'm petty. And so, I made my wallpaper pictures from my last colonoscopy. <laughs> She's like, oh, see this spot here, Ron? That's her nose. I'm like, oh, tongue's crash. <laughs> see this spot here? <laughs> that means neither of us prepped well enough. <laughs> <laughs> and also, I gotta be honest, I have nothing to talk to kids about. I have a friend who's 35 years old, five kids. Horrid life choice. <laughs> Seriously, his wife is more clown car than he is at this point. 
I went over there for dinner recently, and you walk in, and the house always just like reeks of pink eye and shattered dreams. <laughs> <laughs> and his youngest is five and obsessed with the military. And I don't mean like I'm obsessed with the military, I mean like legit obsessed with the military. <laughs> so after dinner, he comes up and he hands me a walkie talkie, and he's like, only talk to me on this. And he runs off to his bedroom to cross-stitch, what do five-year-olds do? I don't know. <laughs> a few minutes later, he comes over the walkie-talkie. What's your position? Over. <laughs> what am I supposed to say? <laughs> Versatile bottom, over and out. <laughs> <laughs> Nothing to talk to kids about. And honestly, I really get tired of answering the question if we're going to have kids. So now, if somebody asks me if we're going to have children, I just say, you know what? My husband and I keep trying to have children, but every time they're born, they just look like shit. <laughs> <laughs> that just really shuts them off. <laughs> so I had to do sensitivity training at work last week. <laughs> yeah, like I understand sensitivity training for people who are not as woke as I am. Um, and no, I mean that seriously. I'm very, very professional at work. That's the bisexual alcoholic chick who sits behind me. Um, <laughs> but I didn't want to do sensitivity training at work because I didn't want to know how stupid and racist my coworkers were. Yeah, so we had eight hours. Eight hours of gender identity, racial identity, anything you can think of. And then at the end of the eight hours, the one thing was said that never should be said in a workplace setting. Are there any questions? <laughs> Coworker raises a hand. Yeah, I don't understand why I can't say that's so gay. We're there for 20 more minutes. <laughs> you can't say that, 